aliens. <laughs> not aliens, more so UFOs. So the New York Times, people have not necessarily been paying attention to it, but have been writing really good articles on what has been going on in the UFO community. And one of the most interesting articles in a while has just come up. Now, I want to read parts of this, but I'm going to show you various people who, some of which you absolutely know, um, make, basically making the pitch that something is flying around our bases. We need to know what it is if it's invading our airspace, which means it's accepted as such. That's a turn. When all of those UFOs flew over the White House with Truman in office, people, you know, didn't do too much uh, poking around with that stuff. But on this, a bunch of reactionaries are like, whoa, what is that? What's flying around our, our bases? I want to talk about the latest article by the New York Times. If you're like me, I'm a younger man when I talk about UFOs. And I've been talking about them for years. And all of these other people who are just now getting on the bandwagon, looking at you, Tucker Carlson, looking at you, all of these other folks, I've been here from the beginning. Welcome to the Soapbox. My name is Jamal Thomas. This is the Progressive Soapbox. Guys, if you dig this content, like, share, subscribe, you can always support this content through PayPal or Patreon. Um, like I said, I've been on the UFO subject far longer than many of my associates. Um, it was clear there was a there there. The question becomes, what's that there there? At the point where the media and everything else gets released, then you can't say that this issue is not legit when people who are studying it, scientists, are saying it is. When you have the pilots coming forward saying it is. When you have the ship with data saying it is. When you have people saying those things were doing fantastic things to such a degree we didn't even think they were from us. Now, you're free to argue it's either us or it's not. But you cannot argue that it's not something. Marco Rubio, reactionary, number one, come on up. Explain what's going on. Are we alone? <laughs> Um, you know, look, here's the interesting thing for me about all this and the reason why I think it's an important topic, okay? And that is we have uh, things flying over our military bases and places where we're conducting military exercises and we don't know what it is and it isn't ours. So that's a legitimate question to ask. I would say that, um, uh, frankly, that if it's something of uh, outside, outside this planet, that might actually be better than the fact that we've seen some technological leap on behalf of the Chinese or the Russians or some other adversary that allows them to conduct this sort of activity. But the bottom line is... Isn't that fascinating? That's a fascinating answer. If it's the Chinese or the Russians, and just for fuck's sake, this is a mainstream politician. And he's like, look, if it's something off our world, it would be better than it would be if it was the Chinese or the Russians because they could use it to subjugate us and we don't want to be subjugated. I hope you understand, though, what was postulated was, is either us or it's not. There was no factor within that, that it wasn't happening. I love this, I love this. Let's keep going, let's keep going. There are things flying over your military bases and you don't know what they are because they're not yours and they exhibit potentially technologies that you don't have at your own disposal. That to me is a national security risk and one that we should be looking into. And so that's the premise I begin with. Fascinating. Fascinating. This, let's do this. This is um, Aspen Institute. This is Philip David, uh, I'm sorry, Philip Davidson. He's commander of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, uh, Commander of U.S. Pacific. Listen to what he says. He's being asked the question. Everybody laughs at the question, but listen, listen to the answer. Right here. Uh, numerous senior uh, pilots from the Navy have been reporting significant UFO activity. You take questions on UFOs, Admiral? <laughs> There's a reporting they want to close off. Yes, right here. Uh, numerous senior uh, pilots from the Navy have been reporting significant UFO activity. 
You take questions on UFOs, Emerald? <laughs> there is a reporting process for that and an office that handles that. And uh, it was uh, happening over a, a pretty finite period of time uh, uh, several years ago. Um, I'll leave it at that. Let's go from the... They laughed. His answer was yes, it happened. A member of your military has just told you that something is flying in our airspace that we have no idea what it is. And with the aggregation of other information is exhibiting abilities that far exceed our own craft to such a degree that the pilots who've been flying for decades thought it was something not of this planet. And yes, but it still happens. Here's another one. This is Luis Alessandro himself. This was the one who was running the program for the military. Listen to what he says. Um, I think what's important is that we have identified some very, very interesting anomalous um, type of aircraft. Let's call them aircraft. Things that don't have um, <coughs> any obvious flight surfaces, any obvious forms of propulsion, and maneuvering in ways um, that include extreme maneuverability beyond, uh, I would submit, the healthy G-forces of, uh, of a human or anything biological. Uh, hypersonic velocities, low observability, um, positive lift, again, seemingly in, in defying the laws of aerodynamics. So um, people so do are you talking... Think, I mean, I, you know, I know, but do you believe, you know, when, when you get that Navy pilot saying what he said, do you think that that was, um, you know, a UFO to, obviously I don't have any other word to use, or that well, or something else? Sure, that's a great question. Keeping in mind, it's not just the, the pilot's testimony on an observation. Sure, when, when someone comes to you who's in charge of a multi-million dollar weapon platform, who maintains a top secret security clearance, who is paid and trusted by this country to go fight wars and, and to fly over cities with, with live munitions, um, and by the way, they're trained observers with millions of dollars invested in their training. Yep. I would submit to you it's pretty compelling. But on top of that, it's not just the eyewitness testimony. It is, it is actual electro-optical data and radar returns. It's also people like uh, radar operators and air traffic controllers. So <coughs> I think the discussion is, should be maybe a little bit broader than that. I think people are focusing just on two videos uh, coming from a set of F-18s when when really it's, it's, it's a lot, lot more than that. So, so, you know, recently, I guess it was in October, astronomers spotted uh, what they, they say could be. At one point she asked him, in your opinion, do you think we're alone? And he says, in my scientific opinion, after looking at all of the data, and keep in mind, this is not my, uh, um, just a guess per se, this is a scientific evaluation. I can't speak for the United States government, but the answer is yes. Now, she was freaked out even asking the question, let alone the answer, and then he goes to like a Pepsi commercial or something. A guy who's just working for your military comes out of the shadows all of a sudden. Tom DeLong, rock star, was working with Elizondo to get those videos out into the public. The Pentagon initially said, those aren't ours. Then eventually said, okay, they're ours. And then the Pentagon published the videos themselves to indicate, to make sure you knew that those videos came from their vault. You had people talking to the New York Times and to other publications that all of a sudden also came out of the shadows. Tom DeLong said, I need support. And Tom DeLong got the support that he needed in order to try to thrust this issue into the public. To the Academy of Stars, the pub, uh, to the Stars Academy, I'm sorry, of Arts and Science, has even gotten a contract with the U.S. military in order to study the materials for applications in, I would imagine, weaponry in some way. The military is taking this seriously. And people like um, Rubio, in fact, it's not just Rubio. All of these guys have started to take this seriously. Take a look at Warner. Here's another one. Pilots, is there anything you mentioned to us about that? Well, I think some of the press reports are accurate. I think people are, are taking this issue much more seriously. and. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into any of the contents of the briefing. It was a classified briefing. Um, but what I I think the one of the key takeaways I'd have is that the, um, uh, the military and others are taking this issue seriously, which I think... Understand what this means. And it could only mean one thing. A, well, it means a few things, but at least to a larger point. 
is something in our skies, taken as a flat fact. Whatever it is in our skies are exhibiting behavior that go beyond the capabilities of our jets and planes, which is why they take it seriously. If it was in the capability of our jets and planes, we would have shot it out of the air already and would have been studying it. Because it is not in our capability to do so, they are freaked out. So they are like the military taking it seriously. We need to take it seriously also. We need to figure out what it is. On top of the capabilities of whatever it is that is flying in our skies, again, those two are taken. It becomes, is this a technology from another country? That's the part that freaks them out. Has China and Russia developed technological capabilities that so far exceed what our pilots engage in that it comes across as being out of space? Has our own government built technology that has so far exceeded what we typically do that it looks like it's from out of space? With the difference that the government has, in this aspect of the government, has not exposed itself to these guys. Meaning, is there a secondary track of technology that has remained secret from basically us and the broader population. That to me would be one of the weirder and yet potentially plausible scenarios because that would mean that for all the technology of NASA and everything else, NASA, that would mean that NASA was basically um, worthless and that we were sending people into spaces on candles when we had something that could basically zoom around the sky in this way. Um, that would be utterly astonishing actually you would basically have your governmental body and the body that's on the overt aspect of your society looking into something that is um, being hidden from your society, from the society, uh, um, but even though it's a part of it. it that, that would be a weird dynamic to be taking place. Um, or it's not us, it's not from here. And if they determine, yes, there's something up there, and yes, the technology, it looks like a piece of technology, and yes, it's exhibiting behaviors and traits that go beyond our capabilities. And no, we cannot attribute it to any of the other nations on the planet. Whoa, what happens? What happens? They're investigating this. Right here. Despite the Pentagon statements that the disbanded once covert program to investigate unidentified flying objects, uh, effort remains under, the effort remains underway renamed and tucked inside an office of naval intelligence where officials continue to study the mystifying encounters between military pilots and unidentified area vehicles. Putting on officials will not discuss the program, which is not classified, but deals with classified matters. Yet it appears last month in Senate committee report outlining spending on nation's intelligence agencies for the coming year, the report said that the program, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, was the standardized collective collection and reporting of sightings and unexplained aerial vehicles that was report um, at least some of the findings to the public every six months. Right here. Eric Law Davis, I'm sorry, Eric W. Davis, an astrophysicist who worked as a subcontractor um, and then as a consultant for the Pentagon UFO program since 2007 said that in some cases examinations of the materials had so far failed to determine their source and have led him to conclude we couldn't make it ourselves. He also goes on to say, Mr. Davis, who now works as a contractor for a defense contractor, um, said gave a classified briefing to the defense department agency as a result as recently as March about retrievals from off-world vehicles not made on Earth. Mr. Davis said he also gave classified briefings on retrievals from unexplained objects to staff members of the Senate Armed Services Committee on October 21st, 2019, and to the staff members of the Senate Intelligence Committee two days later. 2020 is going to be very interesting. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks all.